I told you, this impeachment thing is, is not something that should be overlooked for a lot of reasons. We're all caught up right now on the Republican side and two things. One, the, the race, right, the debates. And then two, this Fulton County DA and the other indictments against Trump. But there is some action on the other side. Kevin McCarthy keeps talking about the potential of an indictment, right? So we've talked about what this would mean. And I think it's easy to say we should indict him. We should get payback. I brought this up with Alan Dershowitz. Payback is easy. And I get it. Too often Republicans excuse Democrats' behavior and say, well, they did it. We're going to be bigger than them. I'm not even saying that. What I'm wondering is, what are we going to get out of this? And I'm going to break it all down for you. Um, but it's very interesting just in terms of where we are, because for a while, House Republican leadership was very clear. They weren't ready to go down this path. Then McCarthy started doing these interviews where he said, we're willing to open an inquiry. We're willing to allow this to happen. So I want to walk you through what this all means. So let, let's just start for a second with impeachment, what it is. The Constitution, Article 2, Section 4, says the following. The president, the vice president, and civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanor. So that's the bar that we're reaching for. And if you think about it in modern history, right? Nixon didn't get impeached, he resigned. Clinton got impeached by the House, not removed in the Senate. And Trump got impeached twice in the House and went nowhere in the Senate. Last time it was like a big deal because Mitt Romney voted for it, but that was the extent of it. It was a political thing. And as I said, the Democrats have nothing to complain about. They started this. They impeached Trump when he was out of office. I mean, read it. Again, Section 2, Article 4. President Trump shall be removed from the office on impeachment for and conviction of. You can't remove someone who's not in office. They knew what they were doing. Even if you thought everything that Trump did was fully impeachable and wrong, on its face, the Constitution says that the, the penalty is removing someone from office. If they're not in office, you can't remove them. But the Democrats don't care. They wanted to say that he was impeached twice. That's what they wanted. And they got their talking point. He's now the only president who's been impeached twice. Who cares? He wasn't in office. They couldn't remove him. And we knew that they weren't going to remove him anyway because the, Senate, the votes in the Senate weren't there. You need 60 votes. You weren't going to get it. So we went through an entire exercise for no reason. And the question that remains right now, that House Republicans in particular, because they're the ones who have to start it, is, is this the right time? We know... It's not going anywhere. Senate Democrats control the chamber. I, I, I think they, they might have to bring it up in some kind of pro forma way. But let's be honest. They're not going to do anything with this. So we know he's not going to be removed from office. Even if you get the vote in the House, you will have impeached him. Okay. Some of you probably said, great. So what? Then make him an impeached president because... Trump was impeached twice. Clearly, they politicized this. They weaponized it. So let's do it. Well, I want to get into this in a little bit, but there is a political consequence in this, twofold. One, does what House Republicans do actually benefit the other side? Does it help them keep the Senate, keep the White House, and potentially take back the House? That's, that's the worst case scenario. Or two, even if that doesn't happen, do they do something and then it goes down in the House that they can't actually get enough votes, 218. And you're seeing that right now. Some of these, mod and I'm going to talk about the political consequences, but I want you to understand that this is why some of these things are really easy to say and you get fed a bunch of information that's just not actionable. Okay. 
let's get back into this discussion if we can. Um, I think for a lot of folks, they're sitting back and saying, okay, maybe you just don't care. You don't like Joe Biden. You're like, let's go after the guy. They went after Trump, we're going after him. But House Republicans are trying to make a case. And let me walk you, take you back one sec. McCarthy's basically saying, uh, we need to open an inquiry so that we can address this. And so what I want to do is kind of give you a sense of courtesy of what the House Oversight Committee has put out. That's James Comer's committee. He's kind of put out a timeline of all the issues that he thinks um, that would be the rationale for this. And there's like six things that they put out. There are countries where there were dealings, right? So the first, they go back to 2015 and they're starting to look at Romania when the vice president was, uh, well, now the president when he was vice president. And they talk about all of these interactions that occurred and the money that goes in the family, uh, Biden family accounts. They're claiming it's total three million bucks to Biden associate accounts while he was vice president. And that they ultimately received over one one million dollars into the Biden families. But when they when you look at money from Romania to the Biden family and their associates, it's three million bucks. OK, then uh, there is a China CF CEFC uh, issue that they're bringing up. And they're basically saying on March 1st, 2017, which is less than two months after Biden left office, State Energy HK Limited, which is a Chinese company, this is according to the House Oversight Committee, wired $3 million to a Biden Associates account. This is the same bank account used above in that Romania section that we just talked about. After the Chinese company wired Biden Associate account $3 million, the Biden family received $1 million. So they're paying these associates $3 million. It's almost like they're claiming it gets washed uh, just over a million goes into the Biden bank accounts over a three-month period. Additionally, the chairman of the CEFC gives Hunter Biden a diamond. What is he, I was trying to propose to him? But, you know, you think about it, you give someone a precious stone, it's like money laundering. You know, sometimes they talk about real estate and other holdings that you give someone. He gives him an $80,000 diamond. And this CEFC creates a joint venture with the Bidens in 2017. And the timeline lays out these WhatsApp messages, which is this encrypted app that people use to send messages, um, and subsequent wires from these Chinese entities to the Bidens of 100,000 and 5 million. So the second claim is that the total amount from China, specifically with CEFC and their related entities to the Biden family associates, totals over 8 million bucks. All right, so we got Romania and China. Then they have this second China aspect where it's the China Bohai Harvest RST Equity Investment management company. Um, they're basically saying, we've got more information on this coming. So let's kind of put a pin in that for a second. Number four on their list is Kazakhstan. And they go all the way back to April of 2014. And they got a guy who's an oligarch who used his Singaporean, the Singaporean entity code, Novatus Holdings, to wire one of Hunter Biden's Rosemont Seneca entities. So Rosemont Seneca was this investment firm that Hunter stood up. And they sent him about 150 grand. And the very next day, and this is in 2014, Rosemont Seneca transfers the exact same dollar amount to a car dealership that Hunter Biden's getting a car from. Okay. Hunter Biden and his associate, Devin Archer, who we remember uh, testified on the Hill the other day, would represent Burmisma in Kazakhstan. There's the connection. In 2014, as the company was trying to broker this three-way deal uh, between Burmese, Kazakhstan, and a Chinese state energy company. Okay, so that's that. Five is Ukraine. Devin Archer, as you know, was on the Burmese board of directors in 2014 and was joined by Hunter Biden shortly thereafter. That's why when that testimony came up, they, they had been on the board together, they were buddies, they were business partners. 